Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, to our men's group and our study in the Gospel of John. We uh, had just finished the discussion on persecution and uh, the warning that uh, the Lord had given to his uh, disciples. And I was going to shift to a positive promise beyond persecution. And uh, we'll finish out chapter 16 with this uh, promise of guidance, empowerment, and victory. And then we're going to enter into uh, chapter 17, which is considered uh, an extremely profound chapter in the Gospel of John because the entire chapter 17 is a prayer from our Lord to his Father in heaven in three parts. But it is a the private, true Lord's prayer in chapter 17. But first we will finish up with uh, the promissory content in 16, 12 through 33. So we're going to move on from persecution. We're going to move into promise. If you take a look at the triad on the left, we're going to look at uh, the first block, 12 through 15, the spirit of truth guides. And these verses are important for showing the authority of the apostolic teachings, which will be of Christ and will be revealed by the spirit. In other words, this is testimony that reinforces the inerrancy of scripture. These verses serve that purpose. The Paracletos will be a guide through the disciples. He will be a, a thought-out path seeker. He will guide them in truth and all truth. And he will direct the disciples concerning the eschatological development of the Aletheia truth of God's kingdom. So from this uh, promise, we see the sufficiency of the apostolic teaching. And then note five there from Calvin, we have uh, from these verses, we have a very abundant exhibition of the unity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It encapsulates the Trinity. Now note two in verse 12, there are many teachings that the disciples simply cannot bear at this time, says the Lord. They uk dunamai bastadzo, they're unable to potentially carry these additional insights. But we have in verse 13 the role of the Paracletos. The role of the Paracletos is to uh, anag anagelo or ta erkamai anagelo to announce in turn the things coming. The Holy Spirit will announce in turn the things coming concerning apostolic ministry. But uh, Jesus says that all things echo possessed by the Father will be anagelo disclosed by the Paracletos to the disciples. All things possessed by the Father, nothing will be held back. The entire unfolding of the Aletheia truth of the kingdom will be disclosed to the disciples during the apostolic age, during the time when they are composing and forwarding their letters and their teachings and their gospels. And this supports the inerrancy of scripture and the empowerment of scripture through the divine influence of the Paracletos. But the Paracletos also empowers the apostolic age. So block two, we're going to look at 16 through 24 in verse 16. The most obvious explanation here is that uh, Jesus is referring to the resurrection. In verse 20, sorrow does not beget joy, but shall itself be transformed into joy. The passion itself shall be transformed eschatologically into joy because it will be the fulfillment of the teleosis of soteria, the plan of salvation. Now verse 16, there are two words used for see. First is a theoreo, which means the contemplative gaze, which will cease at the Lord's departure. But then horao is to perceive with one, in, within one's own experience, which will be the resurrection appearances which will follow after the crucifixion. So it says the Lord in verse 20, the passion will cause the disciples to thrineo mourn and lament and lupeo grieve, but the resurrection will transform that grieving into chara joy. And then we have the promise in verse 23 that uh, that which the disciples iteo petition and prayer in the onama Christos in the name of Jesus Christ the Father will didomai put in place 
the answer to their prayer. What they petition in the name of Jesus Christ will be didomai put in place by the Father so that their joy will be full, so that their shara plerao is full, so that they will have full joy and abundant life. The Father will honor their prayers in the name of Jesus Christ and send the Paracleta, Paracletos as the spirit of truth. So the Lord has given them the promise of the Paracletos as the guide unto the inerrant truth of the divine kingdom for their writings and the inerrancy of scripture. And he has given them the promise of the empowerment of prayer in his name. The empowerment of prayer in his name. That takes us to block three, which is going to be a 25 to 33, where Christ's glory has already defeated the ruler of the world, the devil, uh, Diabolos. For our theological insights for Christ in intersection Intercession on behalf of the disciples will not be needed with regard to prayer because in prayer they will have direct access to the Father through his name. Now number two, the verse in verse 32, we can compare Zechariah 13.7 which says, Strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. The Lord tells them that they will scatter at his passion. But note three, these things referenced in verse 33 embraces the entire group of consolation teachings that began at 14.1 onward. But the Lord has secured victory in number four there. The Lord has secured victory over the world's temptations, the internal treachery of Judas, and the sum of human ingratitude and human persecution. From an eschatological point of view, Jesus has conquered and is already victorious through the Father's plan of salvation over temptation, over treachery, and ingratitude. Now in verse 25, Jesus says that his teachings have been primarily dark sayings or uh, allegories or parables, but he says that from here on forward he will speak in frank, plain speech, with frankness and plain speech. But they do receive the promise that uh, if they pray in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, they will have direct access to the Father. His intercession for prayer won't be essentially necessary because they will have been given the power to directly petition the Father in heaven through his name. Now note 4, verse 27, the new foundation for answered prayer, therefore, is that which lies in the love of the Father for believers. The love of the Father for true believers, for true disciples in Jesus Christ, have direct access to petition the Father in prayer. And uh, the disciples do declare that they do believe that Christ is the one begotten who has come out of the Father. They do believe that Jesus Christ has ex ercomai been begotten out of the Father. And verse 28 is really interesting because it summarizes the incarnation. <coughs> Jesus says that he has a ex ercomai come forth from the Father, and he has ercomai come into the world, and he will pour a uomai, leave and return to the Father. Then we've got a little uh, little diagram to the right there that shows the, the circular picture of incarnation, the ex ercomai of coming out from the Father, the Erkamai coming into the world to enact the plan of salvation, and the Pore Uomai return unto the Father in resurrection and ascension. Now verse 30, the disciples uh, are certain now that Christ knows all things, that he is the one come down from the Father. They had already, already believed in the Erkamai divine presence of Christ in the world. They had believed in Erkamai, but now they believe in ex Erkamai origin, and that's a first step for grasping the Trinity for the disciples. A difficult, difficult doctrine to grasp, especially for the uh, first century disciples. But uh, this grasping of a uh, ex ercomai, ercomai, pore uomai will be a first step toward grasping the Trinity. They will grasp it in greater depth after Pentecost and after they receive the uh, spirit of truth, the Paracletos. 
Now, uh, note 7 in verses 32 and 33, Jesus gives one last warning and one last promise. The disciples will be scattered. They will scatter during the Passion. But then he says, rest assured that uh, I have already overcome the world. I've already, uh, nakao kosmos, I've already overcome the world. And that's from the Greek concept of a uh, nike, and nike means victory. So uh, Christ says, I've already conquered diabolos. I've already conquered all carnal mindedness. I have already conquered the sensate realm of existence. And even though you scatter, you will have victory in my name. You will have victory in my name. You will have the help of the Paracletos. So the Lord shifts from that last lesson we had in persecution to the three promises of uh, guidance through the Paracletos unto the truth that will help them to formulate the inerrant scriptures inspired by God, the promise of empowerment through the petition directly to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ, which they will possess now. They will possess a direct access to the Father through the name of Jesus Christ and the promise of already defeated Diabolos, that they can take up the notion of Diabolos being completely defeated already in the plan of salvation that has been put in place by Jesus Christ and the Father, and which will culminate in the Passion, Resurrection, and Ascension. It will culminate in the Passion, Resurrection, and Ascension. And that will uh, take us to the point where now the disciples are having completed their walk through the city of Jerusalem. They've reached the east gate of the city. They have passed through the east gate. They are now outside the city. They are facing the Hedron Valley and the brook of the Hedron Valley. Jesus knows that when he crosses over the Hedron Valley into Gethsemane, that betrayal and arrest and crucifixion will be unfolded. He can foresee this through his omniscience that when they cross the Hedron Valley, the passion will be enacted. It will be put into place. Betrayal will take place. And so before, between this moment when he is outside the city with his disciples facing the Hedron Valley and not yet crossing, but just prior to crossing, the Lord enters into a public prayer to his Father in heaven, and that encapsulates all of chapter 17. It encapsulates the entirety of chapter 17. And we're going to begin with the first section, the first uh, thematic subject matter, and that's going to be 17, 1 through 5. And it's going to uh, take up the hour, soteria salvation, and doxadzo glorification. So if you look at uh, block 1, verses 1 and 2, the hour is come. And for our theological insights, where are we? Jesus and the disciples have just exited the east gate of the city. They're facing the Hedron Valley and its brook. Next will come betrayal and arrest. Before crossing the Hedron Valley, Jesus anoints the events that are about to take place with a profound public prayer. And this public prayer is divided into three sections. One through five is Christ on Christ's own behalf and on the teleosis of Soteria, the plan of salvation. Six through 19 is on behalf of the disciples that are accompanying him. And 20 through 26 is on behalf of all future believers. But uh, this first section is labeled the high priestly prayer because within the plan of salvation, Jesus is our sole high priest. Jesus is our sole high priest. And number four, Christ's exousia authority within the uh, plan of salvation can only be completed after the passion passes through resurrection and ascension. Passion will pass through resurrection and ascension. Now, uh, insight number five is very important. Again, John emphasizes the role of the Father's election, which precedes the Son's call and precedes the Spirit's predestination. The Father elects, the Son calls, and the Spirit predestines. Only those the Father draws to the Son receive eternal life. For John, only those the Father draws to the Son receive eternal life. John always emphasizes the sovereignty of the Father's salvation. 
the sovereignty of grace in the Father. Now, insight six, because betrayal, arrest, and crucifixion are already set in place, Jesus proclaims and can proclaim that the work is finished. From an eschatological point of view, the work of salvation is finished. He takes up an eschatological point of view. Now, in verse one, the awaited moment has arrived. The hour has come. Erkamai he ora. The exact hour has arrived and is set. And then doxazo, from an eschatological standpoint, Christ petitions the Father for the tri-mutual usia glory that he must certainly return unto. On verse 2, with the ex usia authority that Jesus Christ possesses, he will confer the gift of eternal life on those who the Father has elected and didumai put in place. Christ will confer the gift of eternal life on those whom the Father has elected and didomai put in place that they might hear and be open toward the call of Jesus Christ and the predestination of the Spirit. And that will take us on to block two, the uh, block which will be uh, verses three and four where soteria salvation is accomplished. From an eschatological point of view, soteria is accomplished. Now, Theological Insights, it's here in this night outside the city of Jerusalem. This prayer constitutes the end point of Christ's early ministry. This prayer constitutes the end point of Christ's early ministry. In verse 3, eternal life is defined as knowing God as the true living God. And gnosko is used here. It means the, that uh, the believers through sanctification, through the process of sanctification, learn to know God as the aletheinos, genuine God as the Manas, only God, which opposes the variety of gods in Ephesus and in Asia Minor that John was facing. And he is the Apostello God, the sending God, who has sent John to Ephesus to establish the apostolic church in Ephesus in Asia Minor. Now note uh, 3 in verse 4, Jesus, in realizing that his hour has come, declares that he has completed the work of salvation given by the Father. He has ergon tiliao, which means that Christ has completed the tilas of soteria, the teleology of salvation, the passion and the resurrection are in place and will unfold. They are in place and they will soon unfold beginning in the Garden of Gethsemane. And in this way he has doxazo glorified the Father. In this way in this completion of the plan of salvation, he has doxazo glorified his Father in heaven. And then block 3 just takes up verse 5, which is the glorification verse. In verse 5, the petition of return that Jesus offers is a petition under the pre-existent tri-mutual unity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Doxazo te doxa, glorification through glory, Christ petitions that what has already been established in the telos of Soteria, that which has already been established in this teleology of Soteria that has been put in place, shall result in his being glorified, which will culminate in his, in his ascension. It will culminate in his resurrection and his ascension unto the Father. And this was pro cosmos I me, glory, a glory that existed in a tri-mutual usia substance, in a tri-mutual usia essence, before creation of the universe ever took place. This tri-mutual, triune usia essence of glory existed before creation ever took place. So we have an absolutely beautiful teaching here. We have transitioned out of uh, the persecution teaching last time to the uh, spirit of guidance being offered, the spirit of empowerment be offered in the Paracletos and the uh, promise that the rule over the world is conquered, that Diabolos has been conquered. And then we have our first introductory look at the prayer of uh, chapter 17. We'll pick that up next time, but we have a chance here to have looked at the uh, first five verses, which really inaugurated the uh, high priestly prayer and uh, unfolded the doxa glorification of the Lord.